Good afternoon. I just finished uh, putting together a training script where I use for PyTorch models where I used a few tools that were new to me. I ended up liking the experience, so I wanted to walk you through it to give you an idea about why I like building machine learning models this way. Specifically, what I'm using is a combination of Jupyter, Argument Parser from Python, MLflow, and PyTorch Ignite to make it easy to run ex different experiments with training machine learning models. At the end of the day, it gives me a nice way of looking through my models, both with a uh, web UI that I can go through and explore what experiments that I've run, and a um, command line or Python interface where I can go through and more easily run other analyses, say, on the best model with a certain set of input parameters. As I mentioned, these go through a combination of argument parsing, PyTorch Ignite, MLflow, and what I'm showing you here was MLflow plus Jupyter. So let's dive into each of those specifically. So argument parser is a tool that's built in automatically to Python for building command line utilities. Um, I'm not gonna go through the, the depth of argument parser, but the basics of it is you create a parser class that you can then add arguments to. Here, I like going a little bit farther and grouping my arguments into different types. For example, here are the things that have to do with how I generate training data, um, how wide are my training entries, how many batches, um, how many do I use for the test set. I have some things that deal more specifically with the optimizer and ones that deal with the network architecture. And once I combine all of these arguments together, it gives me um, a function parse args that when I call it will read whatever arguments I gave this Python script from the command line. So what that looks like, and let's uh, boost the font size here, um, is a little script like this that I can call dash h, and it will print out all of my available options to it. And I can call it to say run a set of machine learning models. Yep, here we are. Let's run a new experiment here while, so I can show you the other parts. What this is doing is once I call the argument parsing, it's going through and using those arguments to build my neural network. Uh, for example, I take the things that had to do with the neural network architecture and I pass them to the class which builds um, the network. I take the ones that control my data loader and I pass them to the data loader class and so forth. Now, this here sets up my network using the argument parsing. The next thing I wanna talk through is how I do the actual training script. I do, um, am not super familiar with PyTorch, so I ended up uh, trying out a new method uh, for building these models that hopefully would make kind of dealing with PyTorch a lot more approachable for me. And for that, um, I chose PyTorch Ignite, which um, is built around the idea of constructing these engines which perform common loops um, that uh, one often performs with the machine learning model, like a training loop or a evaluation loop, where in the second case, I iterate over a training, a data set and say, evaluate the model's performance on that data. The way that um, it typically works in PyTorch Ignite is you create these engines, trainer and evaluator are an engine, and then you attach to them some functions which happen at different points. For example, for my trainer, when an epic completes, I run the evaluator on the validation loader. So here I'm running a test of the um, validation performance. And for the validator, perhaps, whenever it finishes, I log information. We'll talk about MLflow in a minute. Or I run a checkpoint every time I finish a, um, a epoch of the of, um, validator. I'll go through here and print out the best model. So once I have these defined, all I do is call the dot run method with the amount of data and perhaps some arguments saying how long to run it for. So here I'm calling the train the trainer with my train in data loader. And as we're going to see through here, as I mentioned first, it runs a evaluation every time an epic completes. 
when that evaluation completes here, you can see evaluator at event handler, um, it runs a model checkpoint. Here I've got it configured such that it's going to print the best loss to a file named bestmodel.pytorch. It's also going to call a output handler that's going to save some data to MLflow. So that brings me to my last, um, or second to last tool I wanted to talk about, which is MLflow. MLflow is what I showed you at the beginning here, which is a um, utility for keeping track of machine learning experiments and the models or other artifacts they produce. What happens here is you, it creates an independent run for a different type of experiment each time I call this training script. It, that keeps track of all of the parameters here. So here are all the parameters I pass to the command line argument, as well as some other information, as well as metrics, perhaps, what is my validation loss as a function of time, and any artifacts. Right now, this hasn't finished training. It won't finish for another 20 minutes. But you can see here that I've already logged a file that describes what my data loader looks like. Eventually, when it completes, it's going to save the machine learning model. Uh, you can see here it saved my, saved my machine learning model and described what the data shape is, so I can invoke it later. And additionally, it has saved um, my uh, performance on the test set. That'll be important later. So what this does here is it provides a um, kind of a nice collection of where all my models go. There are different ways you can set up MLflow to uh, uh, store it or where it keeps track of the state. There are different ways you can configure that. I have mine set up to store all of it locally. It created a folder called ML runs. You can see zero. Five minutes ago, it created a run named ADAD. If I go to my metadata, you can see incongruous eel. And if your memory is real good, uh, or better than mine at least, you can see that incongruous eel is the test that I am running right now. So that's what's happened. It, MLflow has created this directory structure that is backed as a database behind this web interface. The way that I integrated this with my training script is fairly straightforward. Uh, let's go back to my, oops, uh, training data, or sorry, training script. You can see here when I started my um, machine learning, or inside of my uh, machine learning script, I created this MLflow logger. That's a tool that's built within PyTorch Ignite, which links in with the MLflow Python library. And I'll call a few different functions that it has built into. At the beginning here, I'm logging a dictionary, uh, which is my test generator's um, settings. I'm also logging parameters which here are all of my arguments that I pass. Uh, this command here is taking the fields to attributes of the args uh, object, which I parsed from the command line earlier, and stores them as part of this log parameters dictionary, along with a few other things like what version of CUDA am I running, what's the name of the GPU, other information. That's just sort of handy to keep track of for provenance sake. Additionally, you can see here is where there's an MLflow Ignite interaction. At the end of my epochs, I store all of the metrics that were determined by my evaluator. This here is in the documentation for the combination. Um, this line here I basically copied straight out. And additionally, I've got some other uh, information later where I perhaps, um, with MLflow, log the signature of my machine learning model. Here I'm calling it to determine what the shape of the input data and the output data look like. And I'm logging the model uh, to the interface, as well as after I run my information on the test sets, I'm logging the test results um, such that they're available later. Most of uh, what I have in here is a mixture between kind of standard MLflow elements. You can see that this MLflow logger log artifact um, is calling something that's combined with my logger class, whereas, let's see, logging the model available is something that's not a direct um, MLflow um, 
PyTorch Ignite interface, but because all of this is happening inside of the same script, they're all being logged together as part of the same uh, training run. So that's all of it. There's a few bits of nuance that I'll point out here quickly before I get into the last bit. Um, one thing that I do with my training script is I store all of the predictions on the test data. And that I had to do a little bit of work around um, ML, or sorry, PyTorch Ignite to make that happen. What happens when I'm saving all of my training data is I want to save every batch from my evaluator. So I add a event onto the evaluator. Each time a batch finishes, I take that last batch, I uh, iterate through that along with my training data, and I create a record that describes each of those entries in the batch. This here means I'm iterating over each record in the batch, and I'm saving them to a JSON file. So that uh, this function here gets called each time I run a batch when I'm running evaluate on my test data, which means I'm saving the same the output on the test data for each time I train the model. And that's really useful because it means I don't have to run the machine learning model later. All right, that moves me into the last bit. Um, the last bit is how I integrate Jupyter and MLflow. I like the web interface for monitoring what's happening with my run, but I prefer to be able to do some analyses in Python such that I can easily make figures to describe um, what happened in my training or to compare different models. And I can make them with Matplotlib such that I can save it in whichever formats I need very easily. And MLflow's web interface isn't designed for that. So what I do is I actually call MLflow through its client interface. When I instantiate a MLflow client, the way that this one's devised is it's going to look by default at my file system to find where the run records are. What I'll do is I'll search over all of the runs that I've had and populate their summaries into a pandas data frame. Once I have that complete, I can do the analyses I'm very familiar with, like find all of the runs with a certain setting and sort them by performance. I can then pick the best one, say read its output data, and here's a interesting bit of MLflow. Um, MLflow requires you to know where the artifacts from a run are and their names. So here I know that for my run, I've stored its artifact URI. I got that from the uh, run information that I got through the training client. And that allows me to be able to download that data later and perhaps read it into Pandas. So that gives me my data on the test set. I also load in um, some generator metadata that I created earlier. And that allows me to create plots showing perhaps how well this machine learning model identified where the best or where the peaks are within my NMR pattern. Something very, this is something very specific to my analysis, not something that MLflow does. So this integration between um, the ability to access MLflow via Python and the way that I'm used to data analysis in Matplotlib blend together very well. That's all I've got. So just to recap what I, how I create my training scripts for PyTorch now is I start off by creating a set of run settings using argparse, which allows me to set up my training uh, script in the way that I want it by, via a command line script. I build that training um, uh, pipeline using uh, PyTorch Ignite, and I instrument it via MLflow, such that I can both study it through their nice web interface and later interact with it via a Jupyter Notebook. So that's all I got for today. Uh, hopefully you find this useful.